hello, my name is Jackie Taylor, and I'm going to do a series of short podcasts to those in rural communities and to farmers who want to become involved in rural tourism or agritourism, as it's also known, and how you go about it. I started Agritourism South Africa in 2016, and it's now developed into Rural Tourism Africa. And several of the success factors I can obviously talk about with a fair amount of certainty as to what has worked and what hasn't worked for some of our farmers. I think the first is that agritourism farmers that are successful or agritourism farming communities that are successful understand the brand. They understand that the farm is part of the brand and marketing is key to explaining and communicating what that brand is. So before anyone decides to go or embark on an agritourism or rural tourism adventure, I would suggest that you carefully consider who you want on your farm, and that will obviously define the target market, and then you need to go about creating experiences or activities that that particular farming market or agritourism market wants. So for example, this year has been a COVID year and it has been a very tough year and an unexpected year. The conversation has turned towards domestic tourism, obviously, if international tourism is not allowed. But it is worth noting that domestic tourism Yes, it has uh, its advantages if you are in close proximity to a town or where your target market lives. But domestic tourism is largely weekend based. And so the successful agritourism farmers have focused on creating packages for the week. Now those uh, weekly packages can target a market, for example, those who are not working, so those who have retired, but those who have retired during COVID are not necessarily going to be the travelers. There's a lot of concern about safety and getting the virus when you are over 60, and you can have a look at any of the market research on this. So I would suggest that if you want to be a successful agritourism business, that you clearly define your market and that you, if you don't know how to communicate with that specific market, then you either chat to me or you chat to uh, Watsi and ask for information or you read up on the relevant screens and websites that are available, like for example, South African tourism. Now, that's really, I had to mention COVID. I know many people are very disappointed. It's been extremely tough here uh, for me personally and uh, for agritourism. And that's largely because of the red tape and because of conflicting statements that have been made. So to actually go through what's and what's of um, written material that I've been sent takes a lot of time. And obviously then I need to separate what is true and what is not true and what is based on research and fact. And research has been sorely lacking this year. Uh, in fact, uh, agritourism research as a whole uh, has been sorely lacking. And I'm not sure with regards to rural tourism and the focus that government is now putting on rural tourism, how you embark on a rural tourism strategy 
and marketing plan if you haven't done research into rural tourism. I'm not sure how that works, but uh, maybe they are doing it and uh, hopefully they are doing it and we will have more focus that is put on rural tourism. So that in a nutshell deals with the marketing brand. It's who you are, it's who the community is, it's who your farm workers are, that forms part of the brand. And so if you don't educate people on your farm that there are visitors going to be coming and say, for example, you have accommodation and uh, the, it's very close to uh, cottages that are, have people living in them that work on the farm, it's a good idea to actually speak to farm workers and say, there's a reason really why people are coming to the farm to stay on the farm as visitors, and that is because they seek peace and quiet, or they want a farm experience, like milking a cow. So it, make sure that everyone on the farm and in the farming community knows about your marketing brand, but also knows about what you are doing and what you seek to achieve. That's really important. So a number of successful agritourism farmers are actually on our website and you can definitely see where marketing and focusing and communication has helped. And I think one of the areas that need to be focused on in terms of creating a successful agritourism business is providing a variety of activities. You know, while people actually go to farms to have a peaceful, relaxing time or to have family time, you know, it, it reaches a point if you have family of four children that you might want something to do because the children are running around and, you know, maybe mom wants to have a spa treatment or dad wants to go on his mountain bike or mom wants to go for a run. So just make sure there are a variety of activities and explain this in a book that's actually left in the cottage. Don't put it on the website, put it in a book so people can actually see. It doesn't have to be a book book, it can be just uh, two pages of notes, what to do on the farm or what to do in the nearest local town. Tell people, people need to be told. Remember, agritourism is a, is a business about people. Yes, it's about rural communities. Yes, it's about farming and seeking to diversify and seeking to stop what I call the appalling drain of people out of rural areas that are coming into cities. So there, there are no jobs in cities. That is simply not going to work. And so it is going to be up to rural tourism initiatives and to farmers to actually create employment in rural areas. And how are we going to do that? And that's a conversation, obviously, um, that I have a lot uh, on a national level and an international level. How do we create opportunities um, in, in communities to ensure employment? Because if you've got a lot of unemployed people living nearby, that's going to be a crime issue. And I'm not talking about the rural safety issues we've got at the moment. I'm talking about anywhere in the world where you have high unemployment, there's always a crime issue involved. So that, that's a more complicated discussion, but I do want to actually mention that, that we are, and we need to work together with other farmers in the area. I know um, some farmers say to me, no, well, you know, why would I work with my opposition? Well, it's not about working with your opposition. It's about creating an experience, a variety of 
activities. So when people visit you, they don't stay for just one night. They stay at your accommodation or they stay in your area if you only offering activities for a period of days. You don't want to keep on changing linen. There's a high cost. There's a reason why hotels have uh, the type of business models they do. So I think it's very important to create an agritourism route or offer different experiences. You don't have to do all of this on your farm because obviously I understand you farming as well. But, you know, I grew up on a farm. I, I pretty much have worked in agriculture and in tourism and I understand the context. So I really would suggest that we look at creating an agritourism route experience to increase the length of stay in a particular area. I also would like to just mention that our successful farmers are, they either have a booking site and we're going to be putting a booking site on our website, or they are available to take a telephone call or a cell phone call. In other words, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to actually book accommodation and you, no one's answering the phone or the phone's off. So yes, people are going on booking sites, but in South Africa, it's a large percentage, if you look at the domestic market, that actually just arrive, they drive, get up, drive in the day and decide, oh, we'll come across something you know, it depends on what time we arrive. And then in about two o'clock in the afternoon, they start thinking, okay, we are going to be approaching X town and let's see if you can find agritourism accommodation on a farm. The cell phone dynamic I understand very well. We, we have appalling uh, connectivity in some areas. Uh, in fact, we have very good connectivity in some countries in Africa, but in South Africa, it's, it's really not what it should be. So always make sure that you have pins or people can phone someone else if you cannot take that call. You know, make it possible for people to find you. That's, that's really important. Have signage. Um, and I understand the, the issues about security. I have on the farm, I rent a house here on a farm. And uh, yes, the farm does not have a name. It has a number. And that number is for security purposes. So yes, it's uh, not always advisable to put a huge signboard up that says, you know, five star, I don't know, silver, cutlery, beautiful linen, whatever. And um, that might become a security threat. I would also, bearing in mind what we have currently in South Africa, is please tell the visitor what security and safety precautions you have on the farm. It is going to be asked by people in urban areas. It's certainly once the market will be open to international travelers, it is very much on the international travelers list of questions to ask. What is the security? And that is something successful agritourism farmers have all addressed in their communication messages. I think also, you know, if we talk about the way forward with marketing and successful agritourism ventures, we are talking about visual footage. We are talking about virtual tours. We're not necessarily talking about um, thick books where, or directories that people are going to read in a printed version. So just make sure that you as a farmer have some idea, and if you don't, it's possible to outsource this or speak to Camilla 
who's our website and social media guru, about how you can actually make that jump. And you'll see, particularly with COVID, uh, the research figures from the states and from international markets on the focus towards the technological encroaches and aspects of marketing uh, your business with regards to rural tourism or agri-tourism. There's significant steps that have been made this year. But I don't want to make this podcast too long. I think it's really important to understand that it does depend on the farmer itself. It does depend on the farming community. And then you've got to decide who your target market is. And agritourism is a serious business. It's not a sideline operation. You know, the, this, uh, I'm not sure how people have arrived to putting in what I can see is, is an overcapitalization in terms of a return on the investment. You know, tourism does have ups and downs. And this year, obviously, we have uh, a tremendous uh, downer, and uh, that is obviously the virus. So you can't see it as being the answer to your farm's personal financial problems. Yes, it will contribute. Yes, there are things that I can really suggest that make a significant difference in increasing your income on a farm, but overcapitalizing when, for example, you want to start off in rural tourism or in agritourism, you can simply have a camping site on your farm. I don't know a farm really in South Africa that does not have available land on it. I've never seen a farm that's farmed 100%. Maybe there are some out there, and that's fine. But there's normally always available land on a farm. And that land can actually be made into a camping site. And it doesn't require a huge investment or meeting with the bank manager. So, you know, let's understand that time, effort, and understanding of the market is essential to a successful agritourism business. It's very important. I hope I haven't spoken too much. I know I've been talking fast, but I also appreciate farmers have limited time. So if you have any questions, you are welcome to speak to any of us. And our details are on the website, agritourismafrica.com. And we also have a research professor, Professor Niels van Heerden. You're welcome to contact him with regards to research. So don't feel embarrassed about asking a stupid question because no questions are stupid. Uh, that is something probably we were taught um, for those who are over 50 at school. Don't ask stupid questions is what I clearly remember a teacher actually saying to someone that was struggling with a maths problem. And I find that appalling way to actually deal with bad teaching. But yes, do contact us and let us know. And yes, I'll be doing a series of these podcasts so we can actually uh, then go about communicating on a different level as opposed to a written level. There are also articles if you want to read them on the website. So gosh, it must be over 30 articles. 